If you were born in America before 1996, you've likely been exposed to lead because of leaded gasoline, and as a result, you're less intelligent. Wait a minute, I was born before 96, so I'm dumb. But wait, it gets better. We still use it today, so if you were born before today, you're also dumb. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are covering the infuriating story of leaded fuel and there are three main topics we need to cover. First off, we knew it was dangerous from the very beginning, yet we've used it for an entire century. So we started off with ethanol, decided to poison ourselves with lead for 100 years, then we went back to using ethanol. Genius. Second, we are still using it today. Yes, this air right here might have lead in it because I'm not that far from a local airport. Can you hear that sound? That's the sound of leaded fuel. And third, a new study indicates we're dumber because of it. Like all of us. And you are especially at risk if you were born between 1966 and 1975. We'll get into that. All right, let's start at the very beginning. Ethanol actually was viable as not only a fuel, but also an additive in the early 1900s, even liked by folks like Henry Ford. So when you take ethanol and you add it to gasoline, it raises the octane level. This allows engines to run more efficiently and make more power. So raising the octane level is a good thing. But we had crazy taxes on alcohol. In 1864, a gallon was $2.50, equivalent to about $50 a gallon in today's money. Gasoline was not taxed as heavily. You can probably blame this on politics. So it was about 20 cents a gallon in 1906, about $6.50 in today's money. So if alcohol is prohibitively expensive, what can we do? Well, in 1921, a research chemist for General Motors named Thomas Midgley found that when he added TEL, a lead additive, to gasoline, it eliminated knock, meaning the fuel now allowed engines to make more power and run more efficiently. Amazing! So in 1923, it hit the market. Refineries would blend TEL, which they called ethyl fluid, into gasoline before it was distributed to gas stations. So we started using this stuff even though there were immediate signs that lead was a really, really bad idea. Some examples? TEL exploded twice while Midgley worked with it in 1922, and he suffered from lead poisoning in 1923. In September 1923, one worker died one month after DuPont began TEL production at its Deepwater, New Jersey facility. Three more workers died over the summer and fall of 1924 at the Deepwater facility. In January 1925, DuPont started a different TEL production process at its Deepwater facility and four workers died that winter. Okay, so people who are coming into contact with this stuff keep dying. And then, here's a very telling anecdote. Workers at the deep water facility experienced hallucinations so often they called the facility the House of Butterflies. People kept dying from TEL, so in 1924, the state of New Jersey ordered the production of TEL to be shut down. So we stopped making TEL for a hot second, and the US Surgeon General was like, yo, we need a committee to check out the safety of TEL. And in January 1926, the committee found, quote, no good grounds for prohibiting the use of ethyl gasoline. So later that year, lead's back in our gas. So let's summarize so far. First, we're like, hey, ethanol's pretty neat. Let's tax it out of existence. So then we decide to put lead in our fuel. Oh, a bunch of people are hallucinating and dying. Committee says, that's fine. So we kept using lead in the fuel for our cars until 1996, 70 years later. Now, there's two pieces of positive news that comes from all of this, part of which helps explain why we were so dumb for so long. Well, first of all, we were all breathing lead. So, you know, we were dumber because of that, so how could we make a smart decision about lead? But second, we did eventually come to our senses and realize that lead was bad for us. So we found an alternative which we started using in the 1970s called MTBE. Okay, here's a great anecdote. Refiners began to use MTBE as an anti-knock additive in 1979. 
Refiners knew of MTBE's effect on the environment as early as 1981. A Shell Oil Company hydrogeologist testified that the ongoing joke inside Shell was that MTBE really stood for, among other things, most things biodegrade easier. So it turns out this MTBE stuff was contaminating water supplies and it was really difficult to get rid of. So we stopped using it and once again switched back to ethanol. So today we blend 10% ethanol into our gasoline, partly because it helps raise the octane level, which means our modern engines can run more efficiently and make more power. All right, summarizing again, we were like, hey, this ethanol stuff's pretty cool. Should we use it? Nah. So then we poisoned ourselves for 70 years. Heck yeah, freedom, baby. And then we went back to using ethanol. So that's it. Case closed, right? Unfortunately, I have more bad news leading us to the second part of this video. We're still using lead today. It's still floating around in the air. Maybe this air right here. Yes, as of today, we still sell something called Avgas 100 LL, which is used by small piston engine planes, of which there are an estimated 170,000 of these planes in the US air fleet. The rationale for continuing to use this fuel is aircraft safety. Which like, yeah, I don't want planes falling out of the sky either, but why are we using safety as an excuse for the pilots, but not for the millions of people being poisoned by the fuel? Uh, folks, your captain speaking. In the event of an emergency, oxygen masks will be dropped. For the pilots, due to the extreme lack of oxygen, passengers will likely pass out and sustain permanent brain damage. This is normal. If you're flying with children today, and it's worth noting, every other form of transportation, including of course all the major airline jets in the sky, manage to use fuel that doesn't have lead in it. It's a problem we can solve, but choose not to. And to be fair, there are alternatives in development, but it feels like without some sort of regulatory pressure, we're just gonna keep pretending it's not a real problem. Now, as mentioned, this airplane fuel is called Avgas 100 LL, in which the LL stands for low lead, which is ironic. I'm guessing it's sort of some fun inside joke within the industry because, are you ready for this? The legal limit for lead in automotive leaded gasoline in 1986 was 0.1 grams per gallon. Today, Avgas 100 LL allows for 2.1 grams per gallon. In other words, over 20 times what was allowed for automotive use in 1986. I guess because like, it's from a plane, not a car. So like, the lead couldn't possibly get into the air we breathe. I mean, that air's like way up there and we're like way down here. Whoa. Dang it. Turns out it doesn't work like that. A study from 2021 looking at a regional airport found that, quote, children living downwind from the airport had higher blood lead levels with increases of 0.4 micrograms per deciliter over children living upwind from the airport. For context, lead levels detected during the peak of Flint water crisis were between 0.35 and 0.45 micrograms per deciliter over baseline, meaning it could be just as problematic as Flint, Michigan, wherever you have these regional airports. So yeah, it's a problematic amount of lead in the air that we're talking about, which leads us, excuse me, leads us to the final segment of this video, the impact lead has had on our intelligence. Look, maybe the jokes could have been better if my developmental years were during the time of TikTok rather than the time of toxic metals. Interesting question, TikTok or lead, what's worse for your brain? All right, just a little additional context on why lead is such a big problem. Two quotes, starting with the CDC. No safe blood level in children has been identified. And second, from the National Academies of Sciences, lead does not appear to exhibit a minimum concentration in blood below which there are no health effects. In other words, to the best of our knowledge, any amount of lead in your blood is a bad thing. Lead is a neurotoxin. It damages the brain and nervous system, which is particularly important for children because it can slow growth and development, cause learning and behavioral problems, and hearing and speech problems. It makes us like we are today. Dumb. 
And I mean that literally. A recent study out of Duke and Florida State found that half of the U.S. population had been exposed to adverse levels of lead in early childhood. Okay, so here's where things are slightly confusing, so allow me to clarify. To the best of our knowledge, any amount of lead in your blood is a bad thing, but the CDC defines a blood lead reference level of 5 micrograms per deciliter. Basically, this is cause for clinical concern. So remember when I mentioned things being particularly problematic for those born between 1966 and 1975? This Duke study found that 100% of the U.S. population born between those years had childhood blood levels above 5 micrograms per deciliter. This is insane. From 1951 to 1980, three decades of U.S. history, the vast, vast majority, over 90% of children had high enough lead levels to cause clinical concern above 5 micrograms per deciliter. Oh, and several months before this study came out, the CDC revised that number to 3.5 micrograms. There is some good news in that today it's estimated that only 2.5% of U.S. children are above that threshold, thanks to effort like taking the lead out of our gasoline. But it's still a very real problem. Around 10 million people alive in the U.S. in 2015 had blood lead levels above 25 micrograms. 10 million people at seven times the current CDC level of concern. That's a real problem because, as I mentioned, lead impairs development, making us less smarter than we should have been. The Duke study estimated that as of 2015, the average American was down 2.6 IQ points purely from lead exposure. That's the average American. If you're in these higher exposure groups, like the 1970s children, that's closer to 6 IQ points. Higher exposure correlated to higher IQ point losses. The study estimates a total of 824,097,690 IQ points have been wiped from American citizens because of lead. It's no wonder that one news channel actually has an audience. And so maybe you're thinking, well, this is just one study, and it's very new. We need some time to figure this all out. Well, actually, this isn't at all a new idea. A study from 2005 looking at blood lead levels in over 1,300 children across the world found that IQ was significantly lower if you had higher levels of lead in your blood. Pretty graphs that show you more lead, more dumb. Okay, but like, we don't have a fuel that these small planes can run on, so we have to keep using it, right? I mean, there's no other possible reason other than we just don't have the technical capability to create a fuel that would make these planes work. Cue the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA. At present, there are no regulations that apply to emissions from aircraft that use leaded fuel. No regulations. None. Hear me out for a second. Do you think no emission regulations might play the slightest role in why we continue to use leaded fuel in these planes? If your answer is no, not only have you ingested far too much lead, but you'd also be disagreeing with the FAA. Literally the next sentence, FAA enforces existing emission standards for commercial jet aircraft and engines through the certification process of engines. Commercial jet engine manufacturers have responded to requirements for emissions reductions through technology changes by improving jet engine designs and efficiency. So we've come full circle. We ingested lead, which made us dumb, which meant we couldn't figure out why we were dumb, which means we wouldn't do anything about what was causing us to be dumb, ensuring that future generations would also become dumb so that they wouldn't do anything about the thing that's also making us dumb. The circle of dumb. The FAA is currently evaluating and considering a plan to eliminate leaded emissions from general aviation by the year 2030. I hope we do something. Thank you all so much for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to eat the paint off the walls of my old home. It has this metallic flavor that just helps me forget things.